Hey boo, hey, welcome back to Firm Foundation. Today we are gonna be covering James chapter two. So I'm gonna pray us in first. Father God, we just come to you today in thanksgiving. Lord, we thank you for your perfect word. We thank you that we have truth, that we have something to believe in, and that we have something that can guide us on our path through life. Lord, we just thank you for your foresight. We thank you for your wisdom and for your knowledge. You knew that we were going to need this, and we are so grateful to be able to read it. God, help us to receive whatever it is that you want us to receive from today's reading, and help us to live out our faith to not just hear the word but to be doers of the word in jesus name i pray amen all right let's read chapter two of james chapter two verse one my brothers show no partiality or favoritism as you hold the faith in our lord jesus christ the lord of glory or if a man wearing a gold ring and fine clothing comes into your assembly and a poor man in shabby clothing also comes in and if you pay attention to the one who wears the fine clothing and say you sit here in a good place while you say to the poor man you stand over there or sit down at my feet have you not then made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? This whole section is basically James talking to Christians about how they can sometimes treat other people according to their own preconceived notions of that person, right? So in this case, he's talking about treating someone poor better than someone that's rich, but think about all the isms today right we have racism and sexism we have all these isms when you think about that so often as believers we are actually treating other people according to what we think about them and james is telling us yo that's wrong like you're not supposed to treat people with any sort of partiality or any sense of favoritism and the truth is that god shows no favoritism right? God shows no favoritism. We are all made in the image of God. And because of that, who are we to then go forward and decide that we're going to treat someone differently just because of how they look or sound or speak or where they're from, right? What right do we have to that? That is actually having evil thoughts, right? So we become judges with evil thoughts when we are judging people based off of our own preconceived notions or how we might feel about something that we know about them. Verse five, Listen, my beloved brothers, has not God chosen those who are poor in the world to be rich in faith and heirs in the kingdom? And this is James giving a reference to the Sermon on the Mount, uh, Matthew 5, 3. Jesus said something very similar to this at the Sermon on the Mount. Listen, my beloved brothers, has not God chosen those who are poor in the world to be rich in faith and heirs in the kingdom, which he has promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor man. Okay, I'm gonna be real. This, recording this has been such a headache. I literally recorded this yesterday and my phone died. I lost storage. I no longer had storage. So I recorded the whole thing and didn't have audio and I didn't have, um, I wasn't able to like share my text. And then just now my phone again has died and I have no storage, but you know what? God's will be done because I'm still going to read this and I'm still going to talk about it. I might share pictures or overlay the scripture so that you can read it with me, but we will make it do what it do. We are not going to let this get the best of us. Are not the rich the ones who oppress you and the ones who drag you into court? Are they not the ones who blaspheme the honorable name by which you were called? So right here, James is like, yo, I am not impressed. I am not impressed by how at times as a believer you are treating people with favoritism right because the truth of the matter is is that a lot of times the people that we're treating with some sort of favoritism in this instance in this example he's like yo these are the same people that are treating others poorly and you're sitting here exalting them above the rest right and that is the sin that is the um that is that is where the evil thoughts are coming into play because it's like yo these people are not like you're putting them on a pedestal and they don't belong on a pedestal no one belongs on a pedestal except for god right we should be glorifying him we should be exalting him he is who we should be showing partiality to not other people verse eight if you really fulfill the royal law and he's going to tell us what the royal law is if you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture you shall love your neighbor as yourself you are doing well right so James is telling us the royal law is to love your neighbor as yourself, right? Love. That is the royal law. And if you practice that, if you fulfill that, then you are doing well, right? You are fulfilling the royal law. 
verse 9. But if you show partiality, you are committing sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become guilty of all of it. For he who said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not murder. If you do not commit adultery, but you do murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So speak and so act as those who are to be judged under the law of liberty. For judgment is without mercy to one who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Mm, mm, mm. James is literally sitting here like, yo, selective obedience is not it. Okay, it ain't it. You can't just choose to follow some parts of the law or some parts of God's word and not other parts, right? And it, it, he shows us how sometimes we can feel like, oh, I'm doing all the right things, but really you're not, right? Like really, yeah, you might be doing all these things, but there is some areas where you are deficient, right? And that's where God's grace comes in. Like praise the Lord that we have God's grace. But if you are someone who is judging other people for their sins or for what they're experiencing, if you're showing that partiality or having that favoritism towards people, then basically you're just heaping more judgment onto yourself, right? You're heaping more judgment onto yourself. And so the truth is that God gives us mercy he gives us grace and we have to extend it to other people or we're going to be judged without mercy and girl you don't want that I don't want that. Let's be for real. I don't want that. So it's important that we mind our tongues, right? That we mind what we say, that we are mindful of how we treat others, how we are, you know, if we are showing favoritism, right? Ask God to expose those areas in your heart where you might be showing partiality, where you might be treating someone else better or worse because of what you think about them, right? That's not okay. It's not okay. And that's what James is telling us. This is very unacceptable. And especially because we are all creating God's image. It's like, who are we? to then judge someone based off of our own likes and desires, right? That's not, that's not okay. That's not going to fly. And it's not a sign of being a true believer. And the truth is that God is going to judge us just as harshly as we are judging and treating other people. Verse 14, what good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith, but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to him, go in peace, be warmed and filled without giving them the things needed for the body, what good is that? So also faith by itself, if it does not have works is dead. Oh, this is so good right here. I love this word also. I really want you to think about this word also because James is basically showing us how faith without works is dead. And he's showing us like some people might feel like, oh, you know, I do a lot of things. I do help a lot of people. But then there are other people out there that, you know, they're like, I just have faith. You can't have one or the other. You have to have both because, and we're, he's going to tell us why we need to have both. So I don't want to jump it. But essentially right here, he's saying like, look, did you love your neighbor, right? That is the royal law, right? The royal law that he just spoke about a few verses up. The royal law is to love your neighbor, right? So if you see someone is struggling, someone is having a hardship, someone is going through something, your act of love, your act of faith is to serve them, is to help them. It's not to be like, oh, I'm going to pray for you or good luck, you know, just pray about it. like, that's not enough, right? If you can meet the need, meet the need, right? That is you putting your faith into action. That's you showing up and, and acting out of your faith and your beliefs but also and this is what i love here see also so not only is is james telling us to love the person so faith by itself what he is saying is that if it doesn't have works it is dead if you are not acting out of your faith if you aren't taking actions from your faith then it's dead right faith without works is dead let's keep going but someone will say you have faith and i have works show me your faith apart from your works and i will show you my faith by my works you believe that god is one you do well even the demons believe and shudder oof now i have to stop right here because when james said this he ate on that okay he real life ate on that because james is saying like listen you can have all the faith in the world but let's be real demons they believe in Jesus too, right? They believe in God. They believe God is who he says he is. They just don't act according to God's principles, right? God's law. They don't act according to, or they don't act as someone that does have faith, right? So it's like, okay, James, you might've snapped on that, boo. You might've snapped on that because real life demons believe, right? The devil knows who God is. The devil knows Jesus is the one, right? He knows this and still, and they shudder, right? They shudder, but guess what? They don't act out of faith. They don't live out of a belief and a doctrine that is in alignment with 
being a believer. And so when, when James said this, I was like, okay, James, you are giving what's supposed to be gave because this is a great example of faith or belief by itself is not enough, right? If you're not acting from a place of belief or from a place of faith, what are we doing here? Verse 20, do you want to be shown, you foolish person, that faith apart from works is useless? Was not Abraham our father justified, basically proven, was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered up his son Isaac on the altar? And as you remember, Abraham was told to sacrifice his only son, the, the promised son, right? God promised Abraham that, that he was going to build his legacy off of the son. And Abraham was obedient, right? He went to go sacrifice his, his son. And so it says, was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered up his son Isaac on the altar? You see that faith was active along with his works and faith was completed by his works. In other versions, other translations, it says, and by works was faith made perfect. And so essentially right here, James is just saying like, listen, Abraham was a great example of someone that had faith and works because he had to have a lot of faith to continue like to trust God enough to be like yo either you're gonna resurrect my boy or you're gonna do something like something's gonna shake because I know you're not telling me that I'm going up here to sacrifice him and that's it right because uh, Abraham fully believed that God would fulfill his promises and we have scripture we have the word of God that is letting us know God fulfills his promises, right? So that's why we can have faith. And that's why we should act out of our faith because we know at the end of the day, God always got our back. Verse 23, and the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness. And he was called a friend of God. You see that a person is justified by works and not by faith alone. And in the same way, was not also Rahab the prostitute justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out by another way? For as the body apart from the spirit is dead, so also faith apart from works is dead. And I just really love James chapter 2 because James chapter 2, you know, first we start off with, hey, don't treat other people unfairly, right? The royal law, like the number one law in scripture that Jesus gave us is to love our neighbor as ourselves, right? So he starts it off hot, okay? And then he just gathers us right here at the end telling us, listen, your faith has to be active. You have to act out of your faith because there are plenty of people that believe, right? The demons believe, the devil believe, they know he, they know God exists, they know who Jesus is, but they don't act from that place, right? They don't live out their faith. And so James has given us countless, a couple of examples here on people who have acted from their faith and why it was considered and why they are considered righteous and a friend of God. The last note that I want to make about James chapter 2 is that faith is active along with works and then faith is completed by those works, right? So th that's, that's all James is trying to tell us. Belief is saving us, right? Belief saves us, but our works justify us and together those things prove that we are saved, right? So people know who we belong to because we act out of our faith. We act out of our belief. We act out of our obedience. We act because we know who we belong to and who we put our faith in. And that is the key message here in James chapter two. All right, girl, now my kids are doing their thing. So I need to go check on them, figure all that stuff out. But I am so grateful for this time that I'm able to just spend here. And even though, this camera situation has been a whole situation. It's okay. We're still going to keep pressing forward and we're not going to let this get us down. I would love to let you see my Bible notes and all that kind of stuff. I might do a blog post or something to share my actual notes, but yes, I just, I'm so grateful to be on this journey with you. I'm so excited and I will see you in chapter three.